everyone. I am Amma Oswald and I'm an intern at the Science Squad and welcome to our newest installment of the lecture series. So for this month we have an amazing teacher and researcher, um, Dr. Gregory Odegaard here to talk to us about some of his research and um, yeah, here he is. Okay. All right. Well, what I'll do here is I'll um, pull up a little presentation I'm going to give here on composite materials. So um, composite materials. Well, let's talk about materials in general first. There's three kinds of materials that engineers like me like to work with. Uh, metals, as you can see sort of in the top there, those are, uh, as you know, they're very, very strong, very tough, but uh, they are also very heavy and very expensive. Uh, ceramics and glass, it's another class of materials. These are, um, actually the advantage of them is that they are very environmentally resistant, which means they can withstand really extreme temperatures and environments and uh, survive very easily. But the downside to these materials is they are brittle, all right, which is not always uh, what engineers wanna have. And the third major category of materials is what we call polymers, or a lot of people call plastics. The nice thing about these materials is they are very lightweight, um, extremely lightweight, but because they're so light, they're not always very strong. So when it comes to aerospace, um, we need materials that are both lightweight and strong. So metals aren't always the best because they're so heavy. Uh, polymers by themselves are not always the best because they're not very strong. Uh, you know, when you're flying airplanes, like you see on the upper left part of the screen there, or if you're launching satellites or other vehicles into space, you really need them to be lightweight because if they're not lightweight, uh, they won't fly. You can't get them off the ground. And uh, even if you could, the fuel would be very expensive in order to make them fly. So we need materials that could be both lightweight and strong. On the bottom of the screen there, you see a little balsa wood airplane, which I'm sure many of you have uh, put these together and you've flown them, they are certainly lightweight, but balsa wood is not particularly strong when it's in those thin little parts like that. And so it breaks very easily. So you certainly don't want to be flying on an airplane that breaks as easily as a little balsa wood model plane. Now, uh, like I said, we need something that's both lightweight and strong. You know, when we talked about those three classes materials, none of those are both lightweight and strong. So what we have to do, we actually have to combine materials. We have to combine some of the, uh, the high strength properties of ceramics with some of the lightweight properties of polymers. And when you put them together, you get what we call a composite material. So for example, if you take polymers, you see those little plastic beads right there. Plastic comes in many different forms. But if you take some polymers and you melt them, and you use some ceramic fibers like you see there on the right, you find that you put these materials together and you come up with a nice composite material. So for example, you see that wing section on the bottom of the screen. Um, if you could see very carefully, you see the fabric pattern and you see that's in, and there's basically held together with polymers. So that way you get the lightweight Part of the polymers, you get the really strong part of the, the fibers, the graphite fibers or glass fibers, and you have a nice composite material. So uh, composite materials are not new, and you've probably seen them, you've probably worked with them or played with them. Here's some examples. Uh, in the upper left, you see a bicycle, a, a composite bicycle. They're expensive, but they're very lightweight. And so a lot of really serious um, competitive Bike racers will use these really nice uh, composite bikes. Uh, in the center of the screen there, you see a composite tennis racket. So those are also lightweight, but they're very stiff, and so they perform very well on the tennis court. Um, up in the upper right, you see a, um, a high-performance car. That's a Dodge Viper. Most of the high-performance cars like that, or even Corvettes or things like that, uh, or even some of the European sports cars, they all use primarily uh, composite materials for the body and for the, a lot of the structural components are all made out of composite materials because they're so lightweight. Uh, in the lower left, another common application is golf clubs, uh, but probably the biggest industry at all is what you see in the lower right, and that is aircraft. 
So most new aircraft that are being designed and put into service right now are, have a very large percentage of composite materials that uh, are used. And that makes it so that these aircraft can fly further on less fuel, um, which is very nice. So in particular, that, that uh, 787 on the screen there, that's made out of about 50% composite materials. So half of that aircraft is made out of composite materials. Now, uh, so th those are common uses of composite materials, but the other thing I want to talk about is moving forward. You know, we've kind of, we've learned how to use composite materials in a lot of um, typical sp sporting good applications or vehicle applications, um, but some of you may want to get involved in the future, in your future careers in developing new things with composite materials. And so that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit here on this slide and the next coming slides. Um, one thing that, uh, in particular, my research, which is sponsored by NASA, talks about is composite materials for manned Mars explorations. So, um, as you know, uh, it's common for us to be able to put a rover onto Mars. And you've heard about these in the news, and it's just not our country. It's different countries can all put rovers on Mars. It's not that difficult to do because we've done it so many times. Um, you know, a little rover, a little robot, basically, doesn't have much. It doesn't require much. It doesn't, doesn't need water to drink. It doesn't need food to eat. It doesn't need a pressurized habitat. It doesn't need a lot of the comforts that people need. And so to send a rover to Mars, you just need a little tiny space. You put it on a rocket like you see on the right-hand side of the screen. That's the typical kind of rocket that will get a rover to Mars. These things are all very doable um, and in common. All right, but what happens if we want to put a person on Mars? Well, this, um, this image you see on the screen here is a recent image that NASA released. Um, with, uh, it's, it's related to the research that I do with NASA. If you want to put people on Mars, that's much more difficult to do because people need water. People need food. People need supplies. They need space. They need pressurized air. They need plants. They need um, all kinds of equipment and vehicles. As you see on the screen here, you see a little flying aircraft. You see some pressure vessels. You see their habitat. You see some ground vehicles. You see their suits. So people need a lot of things. So if we're going to put a person on Mars, um, there's a lot of things that need to go with that person. And because there's a lot of things that need to go up with Mars with people, that means there's a lot of weight. And the more mass you put on rockets, the more fuel you need to launch those rockets. And the bigger the rockets you need, the more fuel you need, the more mass you put on. And so you can see as you put more mass on, you need more fuel, but fuel is more mass, which means you need even more fuel. Um, and before you know it, it becomes a very, very expensive and difficult uh, task in order to be able to put people on Mars or anywhere else in deep space for that matter. All right. So as it turns out, the composites that we use to put to use in rockets, the, the composite materials I've been talking about, are really good for that, but they're still not light enough. We still need lighter materials in order to uh, be able to put people on Mars. All right? And so that's the focus of our research, is figuring out new types of composite materials that are light enough to be able to put people on Mars. All right. Now you say, how do we do that? Well, we've already used a lot of the best materials we have to put into composite materials. We use fibers that are really strong. They're called carbon fibers. We also use glass fibers. Kevlar, I'm sure you've heard of Kevlar. That's what bulletproof vests are made out of. These are all great materials to put in composite materials, but uh, they're not light enough. And so one thing that's at the cutting edge of composites research, not just at NASA, but at other places as well, and maybe a lot of you would be interested in this in the future. And when you go to school, go to high school, go to college, um, get a degree in engineering or science, you can get involved in developing better composite materials with better materials. And so, for example, what you see here on the screen is what we call a carbon nanotube. And this little tiny nanotube, it's uh, those little dots on there are individual carbon atoms. So this carbon nanotube is really, really, really small. It is so small. You know, to put it in perspective, you know how big a meter is, you know, if you have a meter stick. Well, this is, this is one times 10 to the minus nine of those. That means 
uh, that means billions and billions of these you could stack them on end and you'd uh, you would just maybe fill up a meter stick so these are very very small we can't see them with the naked eye we need very very special equipment in order to be able to see them but they are very very strong very stiff very tough and so and you can see it kind of looks like a it's in a fiber form right there so what we're working on is taking these putting them together into a composite material and making stronger composite materials because they're stronger we can make them lighter because they're lighter that means they require less fuel to get uh, people onto Mars or anywhere else in deep space which means we save fuel which means we have more room for more cargo which means maybe we can send more people up or send them up for longer because we can send up more supplies so this is so this gives you an idea of the state of the art of composite materials it tells you where this is going um, and there's a lot of opportunities in the future, in the next coming decades even, for students to get trained, go to school, and get jobs, and do things like develop these materials or build components out of these materials, maybe build uh, rockets or sports cars with these materials. And, um, and then there's always gonna be a lot more to do with composite materials. All right, so uh, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to share with everybody. Um, I guess uh, now, if, if you have questions or comments, I'd love to talk about them. For sure, if anybody has anything to ask um, Dr. Odegaard here for uh, anything in his presentation whatsoever, um, you can ask right now if you'd like, or um, if you have some later, you can also, um, Always email us at the science squad at gmail.com. Um, and we will for sure try to uh, answer those questions for you per Mr. Odegaard here. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll just wait for a minute. I guess maybe while we're waiting for questions, I can, I can generally say that, um, that you could go into a lot of different fields in school and learn how to not just work with materials, but work in uh, aerospace in general, many different types of aerospace. You can get a degree in physics, chemistry, mathematics, engineering. Um, you, you know, there's, there's all kinds of opportunities. Uh, certainly there's all kinds of different types of engineering, mechanical, electrical, chemical, aerospace. Uh, biomedical engineering, you know, if we're going to send people out there, we need to know how to help people live better. And so that's what biomedical engineers do. It's not just aerospace engineers that work on this stuff, but uh, companies like Boeing and Lockheed Martin and SpaceX hire all kinds of different engineers and scientists. Sure. All right. Well, it looks like we don't have any questions for now. So, um, again, if anybody has any questions later, you can always just email us. Um, Thank you again, Dr. Odegaard. You are an amazing guest, and thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, sure.